How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week three here in our fourth season with Eastern Michigan. We're sitting at one and one, number 24 in the country, and our first two games were kind of interesting. A big win over a now number 21 UCF, and then a pretty big loss on the road against the current number three team in Auburn. And the Tigers, I don't know, they beat up on us. We didn't take any of the chances that we really had early in the game, and then we were left scrambling uh, in the closing stages, and we definitely were not able to get it done. So this week, we're looking to bounce back, throw a little bit of chaos into the college football ring, and beat the other Tigers on our schedule here at Clemson, the number two team in the country. Uh, and, uh, man, things are kind of crazy. So we started with a ranked UCF, played a ranked Auburn, now it's a ranked Clemson. Next week, it's an unranked Minnesota, but they just dropped out. Then we have a ranked Iowa, a bye week, and then the number one team in the country in Michigan. So hopefully by the time we get to Michigan, we have at least a couple more wins uh, under our belt, and then maybe we can upset them, put ourselves in a good spot for the conference standings, maybe set ourselves up for a playoff run. Around the country, there's not a crazy amount of ranked gains this week, but there are some interesting matchups still. Texas and Notre Dame, number five and six, will play. Uh, we're definitely rooting for Ohio State since we're battling with Texas in some recruiting battles and also because it makes our conference look a little bit better. Uh, we will have to play Ohio State later in the season no matter what. So I guess the higher they're ranked, the better it is for us, win or lose. Uh, and then Coastal Carolina at eight will play at number 10 LSU. And LSU just barely squeaked out a win in overtime against an FCS team last week. So not entirely sure how they're 2-0, number 10 in the country, but it is what it is. Uh, we've got Purdue and Syracuse playing. Again, probably rooting for Purdue there, and I think that might be it for ranked matchups besides us and Clemson. One of the reasons that we lost last week, again, is John Jackson, the redshirt senior quarterback from Auburn. He's 91 overall. He lit us up 15 of 19 for 267 yards and four touchdowns and then 19 rushing yards on top of that. He came into this season as the preseason Heisman favorite and he has stayed atop that list. So thankfully, Clemson uh, doesn't have a player on this list. I feel like they might have had one in the preseason, but they don't right now, which is really big. And speaking of Heisman winners, uh, we're going to continue to do some recruiting this week. Now, I had already scouted a ton of guys when I thought I was recording, but after I scouted them, I looked over at the recording software and it said that it wasn't. So uh, who did we find? Jalen Smith, this defensive tackle was a big gem up to 76. And then we found gem Joe Fox at the corner spot. He goes up to a 74, but we found a ton of busts. So... Uh, we went through all those guys, got them off the board, and I reloaded. We did look at a, a bunch of offensive and defensive linemen. Now we're kind of looking at the rest of the defense, specifically uh, the secondary, and we'll scout them and see if we can find anybody else good. Uh, 70 overall is my cutoff for this season, so Ty Baker will survive. Kyle Williams Jr. is going to go up to a 72. He's got decent man coverage, and he's pretty quick. Solomon Williams also goes up into that 70 mark at the middle linebacker spot. Elliot Ayuk and Puka Stock still didn't, but how about Dominic Severs? No, he goes down to a 63, so we're going to have more guys to take off the board. We're going to spend all of our recruiting points, our excess recruiting points, uh, on scouting this week. So we're going to just try to find as many gems as we can early here and then bull rush them with points uh, as the weeks progress. Here's the last guys. Kind of just looked for some best available here. I don't know. These guys could be really good. They could be really bad. Dwayne Bell, 81 overall at running back. He's an 85 overall running back. He's low lock. I don't know if we have a chance. 94 speed, 95 acceleration. You put him right next to RJ Rivera and you have the most deadly split backfield I've ever seen, I think. It doesn't seem like the teams that are going after him are going after him that hard either. So who knows? Maybe we could sneak that in. Uh, Quay Foreman should also be pretty quick at the wide receiver, 94, 93, 74 catching, 84 route running, actually not that bad, it's just his catch and traffic and spectacular catch are not great. Demarcus Adams at 64 goes up to a 65, which is kind of a shame because I was hoping that he was going to be really good. And then Joe Reddy, the guard, well, he made it to that six or that 70 mark, so I guess he can stay and we'll find one more guy to scout real quick. I remembered we have a position of need. So Cooper Gentry, the kicker, 
He had what looked like could be the best kick power on the uh, availability board for us. So we're really going to scout him. He's a gem. 79 with an 81 kick power and a 79 kick accuracy. That is more than acceptable. Well, that leaves us with a couple of extra points. So we'll give it to the middle linebacker, Damian Coppett. And then we will call that good for recruiting for this week. We'll get a bunch of extra points next week. And then we can just start to stack it and hopefully get some visits scheduled and start to get guys committed. So it's on to Clemson. Into the enemy camp we go. Clemson, in just an 88 overall. 91 offense and an 87 defense. So I don't know. Things could be better. Things could be worse. We're going to wear green helmet, white everything else on the road here in Clemson. I feel like in the past we've put them in the purple. We're not going to do that this time. We will just allow them to wear, I don't know, the alternate three is pretty solid. So we'll throw them in that for today. Coming into this one, they just have that one game played against an FCS team. So their stats don't line up a whole lot. Uh, neither do ours, but it looks like they gave up a decent amount on defense and did okay. Uh, I mean, they ran for 320 yards, which is pretty impressive. Top players up to a 93 overall with a 91 and a 91. The left and the right tackle scare me. And a free safety that I'm sure is going to wreak havoc on us. Our top players still that 86 for Maurice at the top. I feel like he was an 85 last week. So Maurice going up a little bit. And that's definitely going to be our key to the game. They do have an outside linebacker injured. But again, it's Maurice. We got to get him going early. If we can get him going... We definitely have a chance to win this one. We just can't have turnovers, and we can't miss wide open receivers. All right, here we are, Clemson Memorial. Uh, we'll see what we can do today. I'm certainly not feeling too confident at this point, but I don't know. Once we get things underway, certainly it'll change. Tails never fails, and we are going to, again, kick this one off a two-mile-an-hour wind here in the late summer day. And as we kick this one away at Death Valley, we'll see what we can do against the Tigers because last week uh, they roared pretty loud and we got eaten alive. And that's a pretty dang good return for Michael Gorman. We know that they ran it for 320 yards last week, but I don't know if we can sell out to stop the run necessarily. We pinch the line. They're going to head to the edge. And it's Logan holding it off there. It's a loss of three. It's an early second and 13 now. So maybe we'll expect them to go to the air. And they will. Stepping back to throw. Quarterback's going to scramble. He's going to get hit. And he picked up a couple of yards, but it is third and long. And I'm not sure I can get too excited just yet because last week we kind of got off to a strong start against Auburn, but then struggled to stop them on fourth downs. This one swatted away by Lund, but there's a flag down. An offensive pass interference. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Ray Lewis getting called for it. We will definitely decline that. Force the fourth down. And it's an incompletion on the first pass for Clemson, which was, I don't know, it took us three and a half quarters to see last week. So already good. We forced the three and out, and they're going to have to punt it to one of the most dangerous return men in the country, RJ Rivera. Plenty of space. Trying to cut it back around. Again, plenty of space. Makes a man miss, and RJ Rivera gets shoved out of bounds, but not before he gets to pretty much the 30-yard line. So it's going to be great field position for Albert Johnson. Not really sure why they were showing Albert there because it is Maurice Tate taking the field to lead this offense today. We're going to go read option on first down, allow Maurice kind of just to settle his nerves. It's a big game again on the road, so we'll let him get involved without having to throw the football early. That gives us a second and six, and I'm looking to throw the mid screen. I don't know if I feel confident doing this, though. We might have to throw it to Jody Gentry, waiting, throwing. It's caught by Fontenot, and he almost has the first down. That was really scary. Works out in the end, and I don't, I don't know if we're in field goal range, honestly, but we're going to hand it off up the middle. Give it to RJ. Tell him to lower the shoulders, which is kind of a rarity for him, but, man, picks up a good five yards, and we do get the first down. If we could find the end zone on this first drive, that would be phenomenal. Derek Bentley's going to come in. We are looking for another screen, a little slip screen. They're not playing it very well. Bentley catches it, but not with any sort of momentum. So it's just back to the line of scrimmage for him. Maurice 
now has completed his first two passes, and we will look to the air for something a little bit further downfield on this play action. Worried for the pressure outside the pocket, having to scramble, and Maurice just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Puts us in a rough spot. Uh, kind of thought maybe he could sneak past there and pick up some big yards, but now it's third and long from inside the red zone, and we're going to have to throw the football. Who knows how this one's going to go? Stepping back to look over the middle. It's a risky throw. Should have never thrown it. Guy was blanketing Jody Gentry the whole way. It's incomplete. And I hope this is the right decision, but we're going to come out and we're going to take the points when they're available today. We didn't get all of it. No, oh, still up and over for the 34-yarder. And we will take a 3-0 lead. I understand maybe we want to come out and punch him in the mouth by going for it there and trying to get into the end zone. But if we don't score points in the game, we're definitely not going to win. So that was priority number one as they get another solid return almost to the 30. Defense stopped these guys for a loss of a yard on their first attempt. We're bringing a blitz and they're going to run it at the blitz. And it's not going to matter. The blocking was good and a little bit of tackles getting broken. That sees Tyson Montgomery picking up a couple of yards. And we'll kind of continue to expect that. This one going to be handed off again. Logan in the backfield to wrap him up for a loss of three. Shot the gap, made the tackle, and it's third and long. We've got eight yards to try and defend against, knowing that this one is coming to the air. Uh, I'm on Sims. That's just a bad pass from the quarterback. Luke Thomas misses on his second pass attempt, and it's three and out for Clemson for the second drive in a row. I'm not sure if he saw something else or if he felt pressure, but it doesn't work out. And they're going to have to punt it away. Their punter, honestly, is not good. He is not getting a lot of distance on those. RJ Rivera, again, trying to cut the direction of the field there. Just gets four yards, but it is still good field position for us. And we got to utilize the running game a little bit more. Our running threats are definitely stronger than our throwing threats. So let's see what we can do. A little triple option. Keeping it, pitching it out to Stone, and Jason's going to lose three yards. <laughs> you know, we ran that triple option last game, and the pitch man also got stuck on the quarterback. So I think that one just is a little bit broken. We're going to try to throw on second down. Why over the middle kind of opened? This is so risky, and it's thrown into the stands. Gives us a long ways to go on third and 13, and we will see what we can do trying to pass this football obviously it wasn't too good on that last attempt outside the pocket if somebody could come open that would be fantastic right bumper is there and rj rivera is going to catch it can't quite make this first or the last man miss but it's still 35 yards maurice tate is such a back and forth passer i never know what to expect when i release the football as he were just going to run it up the middle Derek bentley try to drive him up the the gap there and we'll get five yards that is, I still think, uh, R.J. Rivera's biggest weakness is he's got almost no stamina. A couple of big plays or long runs, and he's sitting out for a few, which is not good, but I guess it's really good news for Derek Bentley. First two runs went for four and a half or five each. Let's go for another one. To the car, up the middle, trying to be a luxury sedan, cuts it to the edge, and he gets the first down. Let's see, do we have them right where we want them? Derek Bentley still in. Play action pass, maybe looking over the middle. There it is. Chris Rutger catches it. Can't fight through the contact, but he's going to pick up the first and goal as our first quarter is going to come to a close here. Just one second on the clock so we can step up to the line and let that one burn out. No need to try and force anything in. First and goal a couple of yards out and a chance to take a 10-point lead. Early in this second quarter, things are going fantastically. If the defense plays this well all game long, we will not lose the game. Clemson not really stacking the box as this second quarter starts, and we're going to run it up the middle with RJ Rivera. See some space, fighting, and he gets into the end zone. Didn't think he had it, but on the second effort, just kept churning the legs, and there it is, 10-0. Two seconds gone from this second quarter. With all of this, you guys got to remember, we get the ball to start the third quarter. Uh, puts us in a really dangerous spot for the number two team in the country. Although, man, their return game is really strong as they cross the 30 again. 
Not sure if we'll get to that point just yet, but I am seriously thinking about just kicking those out of bounds. We're bringing a lot of pressure on this first down, expecting the run. It's an option, and it's Avery Rawls. He gets off his block, and there's another loss of three for Clemson. Wasn't their offense rated 91 overall? They are seriously struggling on this one as we'll let Quentin Whitfield try to do something. There's the first completed pass. Not quite enough for a first down, but it's to Ray Lewis. And they're going to go in the hurry up instantly. I'm coming to run commit, trying to stop this one. We have them strung out. Nowhere to go. It's a loss of five and another three and out for this Clemson offense. This team is so back and forth week in and week out. Week one, we dominated UCF. Week two, we get dominated by Auburn. And week three, could we dominate Clemson as the number two team in the country? Not a good return there, but again, sets us up with pretty solid field position to try and take a three score lead. Let's see what we can do here. RJ Rivera gonna get the football, trying to get to that corner. Spins and makes a guy miss and gets four yards. And then gets absolutely obliterated by the safety on the play. And we keep getting these guys into spots where I feel like we're going to have some success passing the uh, football. I'm going to send Chris Rutger deep on this one. And we'll see. Off of the play action, how they guard it. This is the stupidest ball I've ever thrown. It's going to be into triple coverage. I keep forgetting that Maurice doesn't have the strongest arm in the world. So that gives us a third and six. Could be four down territory. I might just be punting the ball away here, but it's a read option. And Maurice is going to get the opportunity. No chance. Loses five. He was, I, I looked like our defense was out on the field and we're going to have to punt this ball away. With how well our defense has done it so far in this game, there's no way I'm going to give these guys good field position. We're going to kick try and cough or cough in corner of these guys that was awful i shanked the crap out of that one it does bounce inside the 30 so it's about where their drives have been starting but that could have been a whole lot better the running game has been pretty much the only thing successful for these guys so i'm kind of expecting that we called it a run they're gonna step back to pass and the quarterback has to get rid of it defensive line really getting some pressure on him today how about a blitz trying to contain the edges on this one? Hoping for the best. We'll see. It is going to be an option. Quarterback. They say he passed the football. Oh, he got lucky. No doubt in my mind that should have been a fumble. But they get away with one. Refs feeling a little bit favorable for these guys. Maybe got the call from the NCAA head office. They're going to try the slip screen and we're there to stop it for the classic loss of three. And it's another three and out for Clemson's offense. This might truly be the worst offensive performance from a top two team I have ever seen. And we still have plenty of time. Three minutes left in the half. We could do a lot with this. Binkley gets a good opening block on the gunner. And that allows RJ Rivera to really start to show off the speed and the legs. See, it's pinballed around and down at the 40. This is what? Our third drive out of four starting in plus territory. Pretty solid. How about a little bit of a counter? Nowhere to go there. Just try to get positive yards out of that one as we dip below halfway through this second quarter. Clemson's rush defense is honestly pretty solid, but they can't pair it with their terrible offense. So let's see. How about a triple option? This one's going to be handed off to Robertson, and he's got a little bit of a gap up the middle. Just enough of a crease to pick up the first down. That puts us down to the 27-yard line. 2.27 left on the clock. A play action. I'm feeling the pressure immediately. Trying to get outside the pocket. X is open. Jeff Fontenot catches it, and he gets pushed out of bounds after picking up nine. I'm not sure if that was a smart pass to make or if we should have just scrambled, but anything to give us positive yards I think is good. So we'll go up the middle with Derek Bentley. Not even really having to sprint all that hard, and it's a first down inside the 15. 12 yards to Pater. Six first downs for us to Clemson zero as we will go five wide. Looking for the end zone through the air on this play. Nobody open. Absolutely nobody. Hey, it's coming open. It's Morris. He's got it into the end zone. 12 yards. Mark just patiently waited. Eventually extended the route and we find him. So Maurice, six of nine on this game, finds the end zone. Miles, light years different than he was last week. That gives us our 17 point lead with a minute and 54 left in the half. The problem here is I don't know if they will even think about running the football on this drive and that's kind of been where we've been dominating them. 
But with so little time on the clock here, I would expect to see a lot of passing. They do step back, looking to throw on first down. Quarterback's going to scramble. Plenty of space for Thomas. We're going to try to strip the ball if these quarterbacks scramble today. And he's going to get 17 yards. All that says to me is all we have to do is just contain the QB. Allow them to run up the middle if they want. Good diving tackle to prevent that from becoming a big gain. That one actually forced Clemson to take the timeout. And it's going to be uh, second and five. Stepping back to throw. And they find a man over the middle. Puts him across midfield for the first time. OJ Weber gets 10 yards. And from this uh, first down... They're going in the hurry up a minute and 34, trying to bring pressure, hitting the quarterback, and we're sending them back across the 50-yard line. Absolute perfect time to dial up the pressure there, and we'll see as they're letting the clock run. What they do on this second and 18, they will snap it, looking to throw over the middle, isn't covered. Quarterback scrambling. Oh, my gosh. He got 10 yards there. This is risky. I'm taking a timeout. It's third and eight, and I have to feel confident that we get the stop here. Two running backs in the formation. They step back to throw, and it's a screen, and we're going to get the stop and take the second timeout with 57 seconds left. It's fourth and 12. This is, what, the fifth, sixth time that Clemson's had to punt the ball away in this half alone? They could fake this. But no, it's in the punter's hands. He's going to boot this one away. And I kind of wanted to return it with RJ. But let's take the touchback, get to the 20 with as much time on the clock as possible. And we'll let Maurice come out and try and do something. Looking deep on first down here. Who knows? I don't feel all that confident. But they don't really have a deep safety right off the bat. So we'll see how they react. Stepping back. A could be open. Oh, no. Took the sack. Could not do that. And we got to let the clock run a little bit here. We can't afford to go three and out and give these guys a chance to score. We want to shut them out in the first half. That would be absolutely massive. 25 seconds left. Snap the football waiting. Curtis is going to come open. And I'm taking the timeout with 19 seconds left. It's a third and two. And Maurice has just been throwing rockets all day long. If somebody can get open deep, this could be massive. We're looking for it. This is a tough throw. Stone comes down with it near midfield. That gives us 14 seconds. I knew that he was about to make a cut. I just didn't know where. So that was a throw and a prayer. And maybe a chance for us to score some points yet in this half. This is a risky throw. Throwing it up. Jeff Fontenot comes down with it. Seven seconds on the clock. We're going to spike the football and take the points if we can. I don't know if this is in our field goal kicker's range. But we're going to give it a shot. We'll let the clock burn down here so it's the final play of the half. Oh, I'm feeling real confident about this game. Even if we don't make this one, 17 nothing into the locker rooms would be great. But it'll be a 43-yarder as the half expires. Didn't get all of it. Clark puts it up. And it's just barely over the crossbar. And good uh, Texas beating Ohio State's not great, and I did see that uh, Minnesota lost to an FCS team. But at the end, what a half. Uh, three scores in our favor. We get the football to start the second half. I mean, things are looking really good. Even if we just play conservatively, don't turn the ball over. The lead that we have right now might be enough, and we just got to give enough credit, uh, I mean, as much as we can at least, to the defense because they have been lights out, almost unstoppable, almost held them to no first downs even, which is uh, something that you would not expect from our team, but you love to see it, and we'll see if it can continue uh, in the third quarter. Uh, I'd like to ask you guys while we're here, if you're enjoying the video, please scroll down, hit the like button real quick. And we'll see what we can do for this second half. This is actually just our first kick return of the game. Lots of punt returns for RJ Rivera. But his first time fielding one from all the way deep. And man, that was terrible. Their kicker also couldn't get into the end zone. But we did nothing with that. I'm curious if this is going to have some problems. You know, other than that final drive of the half where we scored the field goal, we have not started this deep in our own territory yet. So who knows what that's going to look like. Good handoff out towards the edge to RJ on first down that gets us six yards this isn't necessarily meant to knock him but he's definitely had much more pedestrian performances after that first game uh just like 18 yards or something at this point we'll look to pass and I'm gonna try and bamboozle these guys right bumper coming open oh, I forced it 
Well, so much for not turning the football over. I thought maybe we could get it there, but I forced it. Was going to be a huge play. We actually almost got it, but it's Clemson ball. Let's see. Can we do anything? Expecting pressure. They're going to step back actually to throw on the first play from scrimmage for the half for them. Actually, an okay user there. Only gave up a couple of yards. I'm expecting a run on this one. It is going to be a play action. Quarterback should have guys open. He's lucky. That was a risky throw, especially just to get two yards. And I'm, again, going to be expecting to, the run here. No, they step back. Quarterback gets sacked off the edge. Nowhere to go. It's fourth and ten. Another three and out for this defense. It's actually ridiculous. I haven't seen this many punts in a game in years this is absolutely phenomenal on the road but they're gonna fake it and it is not gonna go anywhere they lose a yard i don't know why that wasn't on my mind but it worked out for the best we might have thrown the interception but we actually end up with better field position and the shutout still intact so it's first down we're gonna give it to Derek bentley expecting to get something out of it just a yard as we tried to go off tackle Blocking wasn't great on that play, and eh, we're just going to keep trying to run the football. I feel like no need to pass it on this one. RJ breaks a tackle, still on his feet, makes a man miss, and he's down the sideline, pushed out of bounds at the 23. I don't know how that turned into a 30-yard gain, but hey, you heard me talking crap and said, oh, I'll show you what a pedestrian game looks like. If he doesn't pick that one up, oh my gosh, look at the stats at the bottom. 198 total yards for us, 30 total for Clemson. We're midway through the third quarter and they have 30 yards. Pressure coming, got to get outside the pocket. Somebody's got to be open, but Maurice Tate has all the space in the world to just run inside and slide down to the five. That was a really scary play action to continue with. Didn't pull it out, let it run, and it worked. And now it's Derek Bentley. See what we can do, trying to run a little bit of power running towards the edge. Sticking behind the blockers, Bentley falls forward and gets a couple of yards. And they're really stacked up over the middle, so we're just going to continue to try and bring that pressure. Let's bring Parsons, give us a little bit of extra space as we're running the counter to Rivera. If the blocking holds up at least a little bit, can I snap the ball? There we go. Oh, there's nothing there. RJ can't break that tackle, he's running backwards. Thankfully, got a good forward progress. He loses three. And now from the five and a half yard line, we're going to look to pass. But key number one here is just to hold on to the football. We cannot afford to give it away. So stepping back, A is open. Curtis completely unguarded into the end zone. Six yards on the touchdown reception. It's going to be 27 to zero with 226 left in the third. This one is such a blowout. I can just spend this time thinking about our upcoming MLB The Show franchise. By the way, we're going to be with the Mariners. They haven't been to the postseason since like 2001. We're going to see what we can do to turn that run around. Hopefully you guys are excited for that new series. And we'll probably stream that a fair amount. Uh, or a fair amount of MLB The Show on Twitch. Uh, not necessarily franchise, but Diamond Dynasty. And the like says, almost another sack quarterback. How is he still on his feet? Wow, that was a huge run from Luke Thomas. Uh, that was, I don't know, that's like 30% of their total yards on that one play. As the, well, he's going to lose some of it. He had that whip route on the right side wide open, but instead gets sacked. And uh, man, our defensive line is feasting today. I think I'm just mostly impressed at how well the coverage has held up so far this game. Uh, there's an out route that's wide open. Kind of saw that one coming, but again, not deep enough. So it's third and seven. Well, we got uh, we got these guys in a third and seven. It's not saying it on the bottom right of the score bug, but it is the case. It's another slip screen. Can we cover it well enough? Smith, huge tackle. There it is, fourth and nine. Another punt coming from Clemson as they're still being shut out. This is something else. I don't know if I've... I, I just... I can't wrap my head around the fact that we are just utterly dominating these guys Rivera another punt return he's gonna get all his punt return yards for the year done today although that's gonna hurt flag down this is gonna be a clipping ah, that kind of hurts it's the linebacker Bryant London getting called on that one 
as Goodwin is going to get this run. Again, we're trying to go off tackle. Nowhere to go. Absolutely swallowed up in the backfield for Alasa 3, which Alasa 3 has been a really common theme all game long. Honestly, I'm tempted just to run the clock out here to try and secure the shutout. Uh, I don't know if we can risk that, though. Jody Gentry, let's have you cross. That's too shallow for an out route and the play action. Sitting there, Gentry's open, catches it. Maybe fought for another extra yard there. Makes it a more manageable third down. Maurice Tate's 11 of 15 through the air, but it is Derek Bentley time. As we're going to try to run the counter here. Just get it north. Bentley's got some blocking and he's got the first down. A really risky time to call the run play, but it works out well enough to move the chains. There's the end of the third quarter. So into the fourth we go, up 27-0. Not much we can say about this other than our defense has absolutely been smothering Clemson. Not a whole lot of time for us to hold on to this shutout. We'll see if we have it. I am going to look to the air on first down over the middle. Wide open is Chris Rutger. He's been a little bit quiet since that first game as well, so that's a big catch for him. Maurice Tate, I don't know, maybe he saw the quarterback of Auburn last week. He watched how he played and, like, figured out what he was supposed to do. Because it is <laughs> night and day compared to last week. I think a huge part of it, though, is really just allowing him to get a couple of warm-up throws. Uh, out of the Wildcat, by the way. And to get off to Gentry on the sweep. <laughs> that went for nothing. Wish that play worked a little bit better. We've got ourselves a pretty tough third down to try and convert here. Man, I really want to continue to try and throw Chris Rutger. We're going to have him get pressed. If he can beat the press, maybe he can get open. Stepping back to throw, waiting for it, waiting for it. Over the middle, we could have somebody. Fontenot, no, it's picked off. Second pick of the game. Again, just tried to force that one. And oh, ho, ho. we almost lost the shutout on a pick six. It's time for the defense to focus up here. That was a forced throw for me. Probably could have found something else, but see if the defense can hold. We already know that these guys are going to be passing the football here. So we'll see what we can do there. Expecting it to go to the air. They step back. Pressure. But they get it to the running back. And now they're kind of, I think, maybe at their best field position of the day. It's awfully close. Actually, I think it might tie their best field position. But out of the hurry up, we got to try and hope for the best here. They will snap it quick. Pressure not getting to the quarterback. And then there it is. A loss of four. Ties the school record for sacks in a game at three for the defensive end there. Smith having himself a night. And again, just trying to hold on. Second and 14, expecting them to throw. It's going to be a screen. London can't get there, but it's just incomplete. Oh, that's a rarity. Just missed his man. It's third and 14. I have no idea what to expect in a situation like this. Kind of expecting them to throw it. Waiting, waiting all the time in the world. Quarterback gets rid of it, and he's got a man open. Stays in bounds for a couple of yards as well. Oh, that's a bummer. Was trying to guard against the scramble. So we had our defensive ends on a contain, and that didn't work. And here's why. Because we knew that the scramble was coming. That time we get the sack for a loss of two. The problem is these guys are in field goal range now. And that sack actually now has Smith... Uh, securing the sacks per game record for the school. All to his own with four today. And this time they're going to run. That was a face mask. Refs aren't going to call it. It's third and seven. The craziest part about this game is we've really only had to call our cover two man. Because other than blitzing, everything else has been perfect. This one caught, but it's out of the back of the end zone. It's fourth and seven. Please do not take a look at this one, refs. And we're going to get lucky. That is not the case. They won't peek at it. Anderson now in, so Smith's taking a breather. Pressure trying to get to the quarterback. Throws it. Oh, it's completed. And I missed the tackle, so it's first and goal. Big problem here is that we need to force some sort of turnover. Maybe this could be at a screen. Anderson can't get to it, but gets the tackle for loss. That was great news for us, too, because it pulled them out of the hurry up. So we're able to get the starters Back on the field. We know there's going to be passes. What can we do to slow these guys down? Quarterback. Wide open on the out route. At the front of the end zone. That's a real bummer. We give up the, the shutout for that. Really wish we wouldn't have thrown that second interception. Things would have been a whole lot different. As they're going to go with the onside kick. And rushing has it. And he does a decent job holding on. 
Well, here we are. Uh, we're up. We're going to burn the clock, but we're going to give the backups a chance to play on the road at the number two team in the country because we don't need our starters in anymore. So Albert Johnson was featured when our offense first took the field, and he is going to get some playing time. Handing it off to Derek Bentley is all that he gets on this uh, occasion, though. It's a flag down as we did get a decent gain, expecting a holding, and it is. So that gives us a first and 19. Still, though, we're just going to hand the ball off. I'm not too worried about anything else. Burning the clock. Clemson's going to fight for their life here. Uh, we'll just be curious to see if they take any timeouts. This is going to be really where we see what happens. We're going to run a read option with Albert Johnson at the helm. So if he keeps it, don't expect him to move fast. It's going to require some really good blocking. I mean, he got three yards, which is good. Most importantly, though, holds onto the football and keeps the clock moving. And it's going to take a miracle for us to pick up a first down here, but we'll go for it anyways. Let's put Ryan rushing in motion. Tight end, give us a little bit of extra blocking out towards the edge. And you never know, Derek Bentley. Yeah, strategic spin allows him to push backwards, and he got five yards on the ground. It's not going to be enough for us to fully burn the clock, but it's going to get us pretty dang close as we will look to punt this one away with uh, 12 seconds left on the clock. Oh, that was a terrible punt. We might get lucky with a bounce. Oh my gosh, right into the, the return man's hands, and he, oh my gosh, came close to taking that one to the house. Well, that was something else. Four seconds. I should expect these guys to run, but we are in the man up three deep just in case they try to do something a little cheeky. It is a handoff up the middle. He's got some blockers. Clock's at zero, though. So the 14-yard rush is a wash, other than the fact that it put them over 100 yards of offense on the day. Man, one stupid interception from me, and this is a shutout. How incredible is that? After we just got bodied by number three Auburn, we come back. We bounce back, still on the road to beat the other Tigers. That's going to jump us up quite a bit in the rankings. Two and one with a win over the current number 21 and the current number two and a loss to the current number three who will probably move up to number two. That is something. Maurice State, obvious player of the game today because he was on fire. Uh, his only mistakes were pretty much because of me. If we can do this pretty much every week, we are going to be in a great spot for the rest of this season. Really wish that we could have called this game a shutout, but it just wasn't meant to be. They pulled off the Super James Bond, triple O seven there at the top. Uh, seven first downs at the end. They had just over 100 total yards of offense because of that final play, but we held them to 31 rushing yards and 80 passing yards. Sucks that we didn't get a turnover, but man, we dominated. Good field position the whole game meant that we didn't need to get a whole lot of yards to get our 27 points, so just 92 on the ground and 162 through the air but it could have been a lot more and it could have been a whole lot better if we just didn't throw those two picks both of them completely forced completely unnecessary but when i threw each of them honestly i was feeling invincible because of how well maurice was playing he's not going to be our offensive player of the game they're going to give that to rj rivera seven carries for 45 yards and a touchdown and 35 receiving yards but he also had like half a million return yards because he spent almost his entire game returning punts. And then how about George Smith? Nine tackles, seven for loss, and four sacks. That is an all-time stat line. A legendary performance by the man. And that's the sort of stuff that they'll be showing alongside his combine highlights as he's going to try to make his way into the NFL for sure. So there it is. 27 to 7 improves us to 2 and 1. We've done our recruiting. Let's advance the week. We have our easiest game so far. Minnesota started ranked, but then lost, and then just lost to an FCS team this week. So that should be good news for us, as I'm expecting to get a really big boost in the rankings. And that looks beautiful. A bunch of really good linemen, all offensive linemen ready to visit. If we could get half of those guys, we would be happy. If we could manage to get all of them, we would be over the moon. Uh, NCAA player of the week, probably for Smith. What's our ranking? We moved up four spots. We just beat the number two team in the country by 20 points on the road. And they move on. Oh, what? I guess the loss to Auburn is really, really bad. Just a quick look, Minnesota. We're favored to win. They're a B-minus team, so much worse than the teams we've played. But let's take a look at ESPN. Why did we not move up? Who won what? It looked like LSU beat Coastal. 
Michigan didn't play. Texas beat Ohio State. That's bad news. They take the number two spot. Auburn continues to win, but they stay at number three. There's Clemson just dropping to number nine as they're one and one. Ohio State drops down to 11. Coastal drops down to 13. Purdue loses and drops down to 17. Not a great week for our conference. Uh, and Army lost in front of us. Uh, nobody dropped out. So I guess we got a little bit of a bump, but because no teams really in front of us lost, they just don't give us any sort of respect, I guess. At least we've got this. There it is, George Smith, NCAA Player of the Week for an incredible stat line. Uh, and let's see, all conference, did we have anything special there? No, he's obviously there, but nobody for offense. 16 catches for 162 yards and three touchdowns from Jacob Smith is a pretty impressive stat line from a receiver. So that puts us in a very interesting spot. We're recruiting pretty well, we're playing pretty well. We just need to put it all together and hope for the rest of the season to be really good as well. But unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It's an easy way to help support the channel. So is subscribing. And if you're so inclined, maybe take a look at becoming a channel member. Uh, it's my substitution for a Patreon just to keep it all on the same platform. And you can help support the channel for as low as a dollar per month. There are a bunch of perks uh, alongside that. And I'm looking to add more continually so that it becomes more and more worth it but it is absolutely not something I expect. Once you've done all that though, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later. Adios.